Hello, everyone. Welcome back to This Is Why We Stand. My name is Joe Archino, and I want to talk about sacrifice. Today is the 73rd anniversary of D-Day, and I think when we come, when we think about D-Day, one of the first words that comes to mind is sacrifice, and nowhere is that more apparent than in the story of the Bedford Boys. And you know, there's so many great books about D-Day. There's so many great resources to learn more about the about this critically important military operation, the most important operation in military history that I think a lot of us consider. But to me, none of them. Re- I mean, there were so many good ones that I've read, but the one that really struck a chord with me the most was the Bedford Boys. And the Bedford Boys is a book uh, that was written by Alex Kershaw, incredible book. And basically, what it is, it's a story about this small town in Bedford, Virginia, which had a National Guard unit, which in 1940 got uh, got called up to the war. And in it, it started off with a lot of guys, but at D Day, there was 34 men from the from this unit. Um, the, it was Company A of the 116th Infantry Regiment, 29th Infantry Division, and Company A was one of the first leading waves that would land on Omaha Beach. They were they they got called up in 1940. They were in England in 1942 and basically trained from 1942 until 1944 for the invasion of Normandy. And they would be on one of the first boats that would land on Omaha Beach, and that's really where the story of the Bedford Boys comes into place. 19 of the 34 members of Company A from Bedford, Virginia were killed at Omaha. No town in the world or in the United States suffered more, uh, re- lost more residents per capita than the Bedford boys did on that day. And I mean, again, it, it just really says it all. And I'll read you one of my favorite quotes from Alex Kershaw's book, The Bedford Boys. And again, I, I think it's a it's it's something that everyone should read. It's not a very long book. I mean, I, I don't think it's even 250 pages, so it's very manageable to read, and you just turn every single page because the story of, of remarkable sacrifice there, it's something you don't find very often. But I will read you one of his quotes, which is on page 208. He says, In a matter of minutes, a couple of German machine gunners had broken the town's heart. And that's really so true, profoundly true about this. Again, you won't find a story of individual collective sacrifice more anywhere else than on this book. And the thing I really did like about it is how they really started off by going into detail about each and every single person. There were brothers who lost their lives on Omaha Beach from this small town. There was fathers, there was husbands, there were sons. And the most painful thing of all, I think, was... Everybody in the United States kind of knew what had happened after the fact, and the the amount of time people had to wait to hear what happened to their loved ones was almost unbearable. I mean, you're talking about almost six weeks at, at points where people were waiting to hear if they had lost their loved ones or not. And for a town like this, the National D-Day Memorial is actually in Bedford, Virginia, so I have not been there, but it's certainly one of the places I really would like to go one day and visit and pay my respects to. But you just put yourself back into that time. Bedford in 1944 was a town of about 3,000 people. So almost everyone knew one of those people who were killed on D-Day that day. And it was just very hard not to for a town that's as small like that. And back th- back then, it just seemed like everyone was behind each other and for a town like that to lose 19 of the 34 people who are part of that operation it's just devastating you can't even put it into words but just to kind of go into the actual D-Day operation a little bit because I do think it's so important to focus on individual stories again there's always a story behind every story and I think to me the Bedford boys their story uh, in D-Day kind of says it all about the operation in general D-Day was a story of small sacrifices from towns all over the world, from towns in Britain, in France, in the United States, in Canada. All of these places sent their best men. This was the most daunting operation in military history. If it failed, the course of history would have been very, very different, but it did not. And I think no more... Nowhere during the operation was things more at risk of unraveling than on Omaha Beach. And again, we'll stick with the Bedford boys because they basically were expected to come in behind tanks. DD tanks were a new technology and they had uh, special rotors and things on the back where they would kind of be deployed and then they would make their way to the beaches. And once they were on the beaches, 
the Allies pretty much expected that by the time that the tanks and then the men behind them arrived, the Germans would really be in such a real state because of the incredible artillery and air or aerial bombardment that had happened before that. But I think from what we all kind of know and have and now understand is the aerial and naval bombardment really didn't do much. The Germans were so good at, at building such good structures that held up you go back to world war one their trenches were built better than the allies trenches and world war two their fortifications were always just built so well so the naval most of the naval artillery fell way short and did not do that much of a damage especially on omaha same thing with the aerial bombardment so right off the bat the german structures and fortifications were in still very good shape and they were that's one of the bigger problems that many troops were facing and more than anything the tanks were not there again these tanks were a very new technology so most of them didn't even make it onto the beach and the ones that did they received such heavy fire that they were pretty much inoperable by the time so one of the things that when you read this book and you, you'll kind of hear uh, testimony from some of the survivors from the from Company A is you'll hear them kind of say they practice and they believe that there would be craters in the sand which they could use as cover from the uh, from the bombardment from the Navy and from the aerial planes. But there really wasn't any because, again, so many of this ordinance fell short that there wasn't craters, there wasn't tanks. So they were landing, and they had no cover, and they were just getting torn to shreds. And I think everyone has seen the movie Saving Private Ryan. Everybody just has that, that image implanted in their minds of what it was like landing on Omaha Beach, and that's how it happened. It really is. I mean, it's not an exaggeration. That is exactly what it looked like. When you read this book and when you read the testimony of survivors and what they saw, and just from what we can understand from history, you'll understand that that's— that is exactly what happened, and there's no not more a more terrifying thing. But I think in all of this, one of the things that also kind of sometimes we don't really put into play when we think about D-Day is crack troops. I mean, obviously, you would think for an operation like this, you would only want guys with combat experience who are going to handle this operation. And that really wasn't the case, especially on the American side of things. One of the more, most incredible things that really made me think about this book was when I read this. Alex Karshaw writes, only one of the 11 American divisions in Britain before D-Day, the first division, had seen combat. Now again, I'll go back to my other point. Commanders weren't really that worried about it because they thought there wouldn't be that much resistance on the beaches because of the aerial bombardment, because of the naval bombardment, because they would have tanks. They thought the overwhelming firepower was going to soften up the defenses enough where they didn't really have to worry about not experienced troops who hadn't seen combat before. But Certainly, we, we see that that was a big difference on in the D-Day, especially landing on Omaha. And it's so sad when you consider that men like this from Bedford had trained basically the whole duration of the war for this one operation. And the first step of combat they ever faced was their landing craft doors going down and being confronted by thousands of bullets from M German MG42s and other ordnance. There's nothing more terrifying that you could ever think of than that being your first combat experience, and many never even lived past that. But we move on a little bit. And one of the other things that I think, I mean, we all understand how difficult it is to be a medic in the military. I, I think it goes without saying military combat, you see conflict. People are going to get injured, and medics just, they always have a tough job. But I don't think anywhere has their job ever been more difficult than on Omaha Beach during the landing on June 6, 1944. I mean, you could just, again, you, I, I think it's important to have visual things that you can connect to. And I think certainly Saving Private Ryan did such a good job of that when you consider all the carnage and you see the medics, how hard they had to work. But one of the other things that I, re that I remember reading during it was, Everywhere men lie with severe head and stomach wounds, the limbless died quickly from blood loss unless comrades applied tourniquets, which many did, using strips of rope, belts, and even torn pieces of uniform. Intestines and internal organs had to be pushed back into men struck down by terror. Another uh, quote there written in the book by Alex Kershaw, and again, it just kind of continues to set the scene of what we know that D-Day was. It was the most awful, horrific depiction of violence that there has ever been 
but it was necessary. It, it had to happen. There was no other way to do it. And the men who did and were brave enough to do it, they have a special place in our heart and in our memory forever. Because, I mean, I think when you look at the world we live in today, the way that things are changing, I don't know if the current generation that we have today would have had the same stern resolve. Certainly, there's always going to be people who will. But I think overwhelmingly, you certainly have your questions about if we have that same level of toughness that those men back then had, that they were able to get that job done. But we move on a little bit again. Omaha, I think when you look at the predictions for what Allied commanders thought were going to happen on Omaha. One of the key stats that I wrote down here were Allied generals had predicted a 25% casualty rate for infantrymen. And I think when you consider that, I mean, that's realistic. When you consider the millions upon millions of mines that were laid down in the pillboxes with the MG42s, I mean... The MG-42 killed more Americans on D-Day than any other weapon, and this was still kind of a new, a newer technology at the time. And I mean, we all—it was called Hitler's buzzsaw because it just could fire incredible rounds in split seconds, and it was caused such devastation. I think after that, mortars were probably the second biggest thing. And, one of the reasons why mortars and the MG-42 created such havoc and decimated units like the Bedford Boys was you couldn't sit still in one place. You know, if you found a nice piece of cover, you, you couldn't just hunker down there because the mortars would zero in on you. And if you did try to move, a sniper would either have you or an MG-42 machine gunner would pick you off at some point. D-Day was a complete nightmare, and that's where the invasion could have failed. I think... When you read, there, there's again, there's another really good one by Stephen E. Ambrose where he, I think he kind of lays out in such incredible detail the operation and the invasion and, and really goes into very good focus on Omaha Beach. But the commanders really didn't know if Omaha was going to be able to be taken because in the early onset of the battle, it really looked like they were not going to be able to do so. The tide changed at Omaha when naval ships moved closer and closer because they were just getting sick and tired of seeing their men getting torn torn apart so they move their ships and there's some some writings that say that the ships moved so close to the shore that they were basically scraping the sand on the beach and they got into position where they could finally just rain down ordnance and finally then once they were close enough they started to make a difference and really obliterate the german defenses but that's when the tide on omaha started to change but i, I just go back to it, and then you look at the total casualties of the dead and wounded for the entire Allied invasion forces. It was close to 10,000, which was about a 10% loss of the 100,000 men in Normandy, which was lower than what the Allied commanders had predicted, but still, on Omaha, the carnage there, I think, speaks for itself. 2,500 casualties on Omaha, and then less of a tenth of that was on Utah Beach, which is, of course, the other American beach, that they were trying to take during this operation. But, you know, legacy, I think, is a very important kind of part of this of this story. And, of course, with the Bedford boys, and I'll read you another quote, which Alex Kershaw, which I wanted to say at the beginning, but I'll bring it in now. He said, No community in the state or in America or indeed in any allied nation had lost as many sons as Bedford. And... This is, I mean, if if I was a teacher, I would assign this book to kids, I, I think, any age, basically from, from middle school to high school up, because I think it it's, you need to understand the sacrifices that have been put into our world. This is a story that I think not a lot, I didn't know about, it, and I consider myself someone who knows a very good detail about World War II history and, of course, about the D-Day operation, but this was not a story that I had known until someone gave this book to me as a gift, and when I read it, I, I, I was just wondering, how does not everyone know this story about the greatest act of sacrifice on D-Day, and, and one of the greatest acts of sacrifice in World War II, 34, 34 people from Bedford, Virginia, 19 of them lose their lives. These men trained their whole their whole duration of the war for this one operation, and 19 of them lost their lives on the first wave at Omaha Beach. It's a story we all should know. It's something we should never forget, and I think it really says it all about what D-Day was. It was a story of small sacrifices from towns and men from every corner of the world, and it's something that we will never forget.
Again, it's called The Bedford Boys by Alex Kershaw. I think it, it, it's time relevant no matter where you are or when you want to read it. It's just something that really puts it all into perspective. And in the world we live in today, I think we need to draw upon stories like this and the strength of men like that had, especially the men who were able to carry on. I mean, you'll never be able to live. So many of these men just struggled so much the rest of their lives because they were asking themselves, why was I one of the ones who survived? Why wasn't I one of the ones? And one of the saddest stories in this was, of course, I mentioned there were sets of brothers from from Bedford who were fighting in these units. One of the sets of brothers lost their brother, and it still doesn't really know what happened. I think it's believed that he was probably killed on the beach and then his body washed away. Um, and it just, it, again, it's one of those stories about this horrible day. It was a horrible day, but again, through that horrible day, it really set up the the beginning of the end of Nazi Germany and allowed the Allies to create a spearhead where they could push forward and end the horrible nature of World War II. But D-Day, June 6, 1944, it's a day none of us will ever forget, and I think it's eternalized by ever by stories like that of the Bedford Boys. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Joe Archino here again. For more, you can visit thisiswhywestand.net. I have a full write-up of of my thoughts and the the Bedford Boys legacy on D-Day as well, and I will include that in the in the description box. But thank you as always for listening, everyone.